Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Storytime with Horse Buddies. I'm Sarah from the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame, and today we'll be reading J is for Justify. Let's get started. A is for American Pharaoh. American Pharaoh was born one chilly groundhog day. Three years later, he ran for the roses on the first Saturday in May. The word Pharaoh in his name was actually misspelled, but thanks to his long stride on the track, he truly excelled. This bay with a faint star was as gentle as a lamb. He went on to win Thoroughbred Racing's first Grand Slam. B is for Barbaro. This handsome bay won the Derby in spectacular fashion. And after his Preakness injury, the world demonstrated such compassion. For months, fans watched for news of his recovery in the headlines and donations in his memory have advanced veterinary medicine for equines. A statue at Churchill Downs depicts one of his most memorable poses. While buried underneath, he must surely dream of roses. C is for citation. Time and time again, big sigh demonstrated consistence. He could win on any track at any distance. He was owned and bred by Calumet. He often traveled by rail, but his name inspired that of a jet. His owner had a stipulation to declare, and so Citation raced until he was a millionaire. D is for Dr. Fager. Dr. Charles Anthony Fager was his namesake, and zoos concluded that he could leave cheetahs in his wake. He once won four titles in a single season, and any horse who looked him in the eye was beaten. While Dr. Fager was amazingly versatile, he's best known for setting the world record at a mile. E is for easy goer. He and Sunday Silence had a great rivalry on the track. In the Kentucky Derby, the Black Colt beat him to the head of the pack. Their clash at Pimlico is regarded as the most exciting Preakness ever. For Sunday Silence, it was another successful endeavor. With the Triple Crown at stake, fans watched from sea to sea but this time Easy Goer proved the Belmont was his cup of tea. F is for Forgo. This big ornery bay would stare down his competition. Getting to the finish line first was his mission. They loaded him down with enough weight to stop a freight train but that did little to keep him out of the fast lane. With courage and heart, the superstar left his mark. In his retirement, fans flocked to visit him at the Kentucky Horse Park. G is for Gallant Fox. The great Sonny Jim Fitzsimmons was his trainer, and with great victories, each of them became a Hall of Famer. For his three-year-old season, 
jockey Earl Sand came out of retirement. Together, they won what was then known as the Triple Event. This gallant bay was often referred to as the Fox of Bel Air. His crowning accomplishment was something he and his son would share. H is for Holy Bull. The bull was a striking dapple gray. He was best known for his courage at the end of the day. Aggressive on the track, he might bite his foes. Off the track, he was known to spot photographers and kindly strike a pose. He could win a race at any distance with his extreme acceleration. In his thrilling Travers victory, he held off a charge with great determination. I is for I'll have another. When it came to cookies, this chestnut's owner loved to have one more. Out on the track, I'll have another was lucky to have Lava Man as a mentor. Roses were bestowed upon this racing machine after he became the first horse to win the Derby from post-19. After winning the Preakness, his racing career met the end of its span. He eventually went to live in California after spending some time in Japan. J is for Justify, unraced at two before the derby he had little time to rehearse. Nonetheless, he won the race and broke Apollo's curse. His victorious emergence from the Preakness fog was quite serene. Next, he won the Belmont and triple crown number 13. He had exploded onto the scene and defied expectation. He proved that you should dare to dream and captured our imagination. K is for Kelso. Sired by your host, he had such courage, consistency, and drive. He won Horse of the Year, not two or three times, but five. Successful for so many seasons, horses like him are now obsolete. When he finally retired, he enjoyed his days with a pony named Pete. Throughout his career, this son of Maid of Flight had run like he had wings. Now his gravestone in Maryland reads, where he gallops, the earth sings. L is for Lava Man. The most successful claimer in history, he won on both turf and dirt. This attention-loving gelding was quite the extrovert. When he didn't take to retirement, his trainer tried another approach. Lava Man began his second career and became known as Coach. Though behind him were his days as a runner, on Derby Day, he was the lead pony for I'll Have Another. M is for Man O' War. As he ran with ease, many world track and stakes records were set. His name is one that racing fans will never forget. He was loved by his groom who declared him the mostest hoss and defeated by upset was his only loss. At an incredible 28 feet, he had the world's longest stride. His best friend, a calm hunter named Major Treat, was often by his side. A 
10 is for native dancer. This early sports superstar was known as the Grey Ghost. His reputation was one that television helped build from coast to coast. His silks were cherise with white diamonds and his coat was a dapple gray. He only had one bad race. Unfortunately, it was on Derby Day. He was strong-willed and loved to come from behind and in his stall, he hung out with kittens to unwind. O is for Omaha. He was the son of one of racing's triple crown winning elite and the Bel Air bullet went on to match his father's feet. He demonstrated great speed and stamina while in motion and he was the first triple crown winner to compete across the ocean. Omaha retired to the town in Nebraska whose name he bore. There he spent his days with a groom whom he had such a rapport. P is for point given. When the big red train ran, he was poetry in motion. On the track in the mornings, this clown loved to cause commotion. He was really good at raking in the dough. He became the first horse to win $4 million races in a row. He retired to the Kentucky Horse Park's Hall of Champions, where fans love to visit and wish him congratulations. Q is for quiet American. This grandson of Dr. Fager was bred in the Sunshine State. Lightly raced at ages two and three, at four he began to captivate. Steadfast on the track, he raced determinedly to the wire. He then went on to become a champion sire. He lived a long, happy life, dying at age 30. His most famous son, Real Quiet, won the Kentucky Derby. R is for Rachel Alexandra. This famous filly blew away the field in the Kentucky Oaks. Her courage and grace endeared her to many folks. Next, she ran in the Preakness where she continued to make noise. She became the first filly in 85 years to win it against the boys. After her historic Woodward victory, you wouldn't believe the jubilation at the spa. Her horse of the year title, the first for a three-year-old female, continues to inspire awe. S is for Secretariat. Big Red is one of the most famous racehorses in the land. To this day, his records in the Triple Crown races still stand. His great stamina and efficient stride were among his strengths. He won the Belmont by an astonishing 31 lengths. His record-breaking syndication was a cultural force, and they discovered his heart was twice the size of a normal horse. T is for Tis Now. A leg injury led to the late start of his career, but he would go on to inspire others by his ability to persevere. He had a blaze on his face shaped like a tornado, 
and he was the first horse to win the Breeders' Cup Classic twice in a row. While on the track, he was determined and gritty, but in the barn, his tricks were rather witty. U is for unbridled. On television, he had an unforgettable Kentucky Derby win. We got to see his owner's reaction. She had quite the grin. He had an ongoing rivalry with a horse named Summer Squall against a Breeders' Cup Classic filled with champs. He beat them all. While Dr. Fager is a name in his family tree, Unbridled also appears in American Pharaoh's pedigree. V is for Vagrant. Some of the names in his pedigree are downright crazy. Thank goodness he didn't take after his dam, who was named Lazy. In the second running of the Kentucky Derby, he faced his rival parole. Like two of his brothers who aimed to win this race, he accomplished his goal. After his racing career, pulling a vegetable cart must have been lame. But then he became a saddle horse for a Long Island lady since he was so tame. W is for War Admiral. While he didn't inherit the looks of his sire, he most certainly acquired Man o' War's fire. Against starting gates, he was ever on the attack. During the Great Depression, fans looked forward to seeing him on the track. The Admiral was the fourth Triple Crown winner and one of racing's exemplary but he lost to Seabiscuit in the match race of the century. X is for Extra Heat. This Bay Lady was a daughter of Louisiana Derby winner Dixieland Heat. On the track, she was a sprinter that was tough to beat. Though these shorter distances best suited her ability, she was presented the Eclipse Award for overall three-year-old filly. Her consistency led to her acclaim, and she was later inducted into the Hall of Fame. Y is for your host. Known as the Magnificent Cripple, even before his big wreck, this horse was born with a crooked eye, ear, and neck. Four white leg markings are bad luck, according to superstition. Could that be why he broke his leg and shoulder in a racing collision? He demonstrated incredible courage and recovery he had to undergo. Your host went on to sire the great Kelso. Z is for Zenyatta. Fans admired the way their beloved Queen Z would prance. Their favorite part of her pre-race routine was that dance. She preferred to stare at her competition rather than warm up and became the first female to win the classic in the Breeders' Cup. Zenyatta went on quite an epic winning spree that didn't end until her 19th consecutive victory.
B and Thank you so much for joining us today for story time with Horse Buddies, for reading J is for Justify with us today, and we hope to see you next time. Bye.